I don't know how many of you is using Google Fit. If you are using Android phones, this is a really excellent tool to combine all the data from various other apps that track some kind of health-related data. Even if you are using Fitbit, Samsung app, or some other apps or meetings, all of that data can be combined inside Google Fit. And Google Fit can be the repository or database for everything related to your health, activity, sleep, etc. Today, we will be looking at one awesome hacks integration called Google Fit integration. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let me first say thank you to Yorkshire IoT for creating this awesome Home Assistant Hex integration. And don't forget, if you use or like this integration, click it and give it a star. So today we will be looking at this HA Google Fit integration, the Hex integration, that allows you to pull data from your Google Fit inside your Home Assistant. The question is, do you need it? Well, actually, we don't need a lot of things, but it's fun to have data there and to create some specific or passive-aggressive automations that would warn you to get your ass off the chair, do some exercise if you didn't do enough in one day. The installation has, unfortunately, two parts. One part is very simple Hex installation that installs this Hex component, but the other one, unfortunately, requires you to dig in into Google Developer's account. But that shouldn't be an issue if you already have Google Calendar, Google Mail, or for example, Google Assistant inside your Home Assistant. If you have, you are probably two-thirds of the way done. This integration requires Google Fit REST API, or how it's called inside the developer's platform, Fitness API. It will pull all the data it can and provide that as a sensor data inside one device inside your Home Assistant. On the documentations page, you can see the platform. Is it a sensor, binary sensor, or whatever? And most of them, if I'm not mistaken, are sensors. Then you have the name of the device that will be created or entity that will be created and some information about each of the entities created. We will talk about the frequency of the update of data inside Home Assistant later when we create integration inside Home Assistant. But also bear in mind this note here. It takes between 30 and 60 minutes for the data that is created until it's pushed on the servers and then synchronized back with Home Assistant. So there is a latency. And yeah, this is not a medical grade device or medical grade application. This is more for our fun. And yes, if you are wondering, you can create multiple accounts. Unfortunately, it does require you to go through all the steps of authentication configuration for each of the accounts, but yes, it's possible. So you can track your and your better half data inside one instance of Home Assistant. But enough about the integration itself, let's start installing it. For that, we have to go to Home Assistant into Hex or HACS. In Hex, go to Integrations, Explore and Download Repositories, and type in Google, and select Google Fit. We've already looked through the documentation, so we are going to click on Download. The latest version at the time of the recording is version 2.1.1. Click Download. And we'll wait for the integration to install. Since this is a Hex integration, we will need to restart our Home Assistant. Let's go back. We have here Notification. Click on Navigate. And Restart. OK, this part was easy, but now comes the hard part. If you already have Google Calendar, Google Mail, or something similar, you should already have a Google Developers account. So I will be going only through those steps for those of you that already have everything set up. In the documentation, I will be leaving a link to the Google Mail documentation, since this one is also referenced by the integration itself. There are steps what you need to do in order to get everything ready for the first time. So I'm going to do step one, then we will skip to step 13. We will click on Gmail, but we do not need Gmail APR, instead we need Google Fit. Click on Navigation Bar, APIs, Enabled APIs, search for Fit, Fitness API, click on it, and enable it. Now our Fitness API should be enabled. It will take a couple of seconds for this to finish. Let's check OAuth consent screen. This is in production. Let's go to Credentials, Create Credentials, OAuth Client ID, Web Application, 
name will be home assistant fit this can be any name but i do suggest that you create a unique name so that later on you will know what app is using what auth key click on add ure and paste the link this link is available in the documentation on the step 16 this one here copy it and click create i recommend that if you have a safe place that you download json file and also temporarily copy this client id and client secret both of those will be needed inside home assistant for this integration to work click on ok and we have here this home assistant fit this is new auth to client id creation date type of the application client id etc we are pretty much done in this google developer section but before we end here let's once again just check if the api is enabled library fit click on it and it should have a green mark API is enabled. By the time this is finished, your home assistant has probably rebooted. So let's go to settings, integrations, add integration, type in Google and select fit. Here you have once again the information on the steps that we have already finished. I'll type my name here and paste client secret and client ID. Click add. And if everything is correct, you should see screen to select your account. If you have only one account, you select that one. I have multiple accounts, so I'll be selecting the one that is tied into my developer account. Advanced, open, I will select everything. Unfortunately, this is in creation, but this more or less tells Google to allow access to various data. For example, my sleeping data, my heart rate, body temperature, oxygen saturation, glucose, blah, 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 and everything. Continue. And now make sure that this instance URL matches the URL of your home assistant and just click on link account. Select an area and finish. If we go to Google Fit integration, we will see that we have one device with 22 entities. As I mentioned previously, yes, you can also have multiple accounts. For each of the accounts, unfortunately, you have to go through those developer steps and you have to create separate developer account because this one will be tied to the email address that's tied with your Google account that is actually keeping all those Google Fit related data inside. But there is currently one bug and that bug means that even if you have multiple accounts, unfortunately, you will see it. No, this is not unfortunate. Good thing is that you will see them as a separate devices. So for example, Billy Tinker will be one device, my wife will be second device, whatever would be third and fourth, etc., etc. But then after you open the device itself, for all of those family members that you are tracking Google Fit data, they are currently stuck inside one window. They are available as separate entities, but they are mixed up inside one device. This is something that is currently being worked on. But for me, I don't care. I'm the only one in the family using Google Fit. So let's look at my data. If we click on one device, here is everything that is pulled from my Google Fit account. It doesn't look that bad. Okay, so um, yeah, if you do all the steps as described and you still see unknown, Wait for a couple of minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes. You can even restart your home assistant, but then again, wait for five, 10 minutes because it takes some time for this integration to pull data from Google Fit. It does update that data automatically, but it also waits for a couple of minutes because it doesn't want to kick the API too much. When we are talking about that, let's check one thing before we look at the, all the sensor data. If we click on configure, we have two options. The one is minutes between REST API queries. Don't go below five minutes. You can go above five minutes, especially if you have issues and you hit the API request limit. You can go for seven, eight, 10 minutes because also that data in Google Fit doesn't update in real time. And probably for the data you're pulling inside Home Assistant, it will not be necessary for data to be accurate to the last second. So either leave it as five or move it to eight or 10 or something else. The second check mark is used to set if you want to have sensors set to zero if the data is not available or at unknown. It's up to you. I prefer to have them set at zero when there is no data instead of unknown. But on the other hand, you may be using unknown to see what data is not getting pulled or what data you actually do not have in Google Fit. Click submit and this should be updated. If you know Google Fit, this integration is pulling everything it can from there. 
you have active minutes, you have awake time, this is awake time during the sleep period, your basal metabolic rate, glucose, blood pressure, diastolic, systolic, fat, temperature, burned calories, how long were you in a deep sleep, what distance did you travel, this is a walk distance or running distance or whatever, heart points for the day, heart rate, height, hydration, if you are tracking hydration, how long were you in a light sleep, oxygen saturation, REM sleep, resting heart rate, sleep, steps, and weight. Depending on how you are feeling in data in Google Fit, and I'm doing this with Google Pixel Watch and the Fit app, Fitbit app, you may or may not have all the data there. Remember that some of the data can also be manually inserted inside Google Fit if you do not have it via your watch or whatever smart device you are using. For example, my blood pressure data is entered daily because I'm tracking that daily since lately my blood pressure has begun to rise. I created new tab and this one is tracking all the data available again from Google Fit for me divided in uh, cards that look appropriate. For example, this is activity related, this is heart and blood and this is sleep. Okay, now you have all of your health data inside your home assistant. The question is what you can do with it. It's hard for me to give you an answer, but we can look at a couple of examples. For example, for the automations you can create activity warning. If your daily activity is less than 1 hour and 30 minutes or 90 minutes or whatever seconds, trigger it after 6 pm so you know that you still haven't reached your daily goal. Or create automation that would warn you if you didn't hydrate enough. For example, if hydration is below 1 liter at 1 pm, warn me that I need to drink more water. You can be creative as much as you like. For example, in the morning do recap of how your night went, for example, how long did you sleep, how long were you in a deep sleep, in REM or awake. Also create warning that if, for example, your resting heart rate goes above 65 beats per minute during the night, which is the resting heart rate, to tell you to chill out, to slow down, to go earlier to bed, etc, etc. You can create as many automations as you want, you just need to be creative with all the data that you have here. There are more passive-aggressive, of course, you can also go for passive-aggressive automations. For example, if you have a desired weight and you are above it and you open fridge after 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. to get a warning on what you are eating before you go to bed. So yeah, there are tons and tons of things that you can do with this integration. And once again, it's all up to you. But also don't forget, none of the data here is medical-grade data. Everything you see here is pulled from a Google Fit. And everything Google Fit has in itself is pulled from smartwatches or some other devices. And yes, there is also latency, 5 minute latency. So I wouldn't bet on this as a medical device. It can be nice overview, it can give information, it can do a morning briefs for you, it can do an evening briefs for you, especially if you integrate it with the OpenAI to create some kind of a summary of all the data. But this is still more or less just a gimmick. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Thank you. This will also impact my heart points daily because my heart points are through the roof when I see videos that are trending and that you like. If you did find HACS gem and would like to share with us, don't forget to drop me a line down in a comment section below or you can find me on the Twitter and send me a link there. And for the end, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or commented on my videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You all really make my day great. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or you can go to my merchandise store and buy something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.